Today I'm going to share some of my favourite ways to develop ideas in painting. Taking that first step out of sketchbooks and towards works on paper. I'm looking to gather ideas from the landscape and begin to push some of my ideas forwards. And this is one of the stepping stones that I take along the way to get there. Stay tuned to see how I build into these paintings when I'm back into the studio at the end of this video. Hello and a very warm welcome to this video. My name is Orla and I'm an abstract artist and illustrator from Scotland. I love to document my process and thoughts around creativity to share through videos here on YouTube. I've noticed that this first thing I'm going to share with you is something which is incredibly simple but has turned out to be very important in my process and that is to simply continue researching and painting with an open mind but this time instead of in the sketchbook pages directly it's all about working on loose leaf paper. The difference here is in two parts the first being mindset and the second one being presentation or format. I think sketchbooks can be really freeing places to work without pressure, but I've always had that niggling thought at the back of my mind asking, what if I made a cracker of a painting and it's stuck in a book? Equally, sometimes working on paper can feel too daunting when you're not quite ready to get stuck into the final work or you're not sure what to do. So I like to take these two problems and put them together. I'm trying to practice an approach, which is all about maintaining that loose sense of play whilst working on loose leaf paper. It is a total mindset thing. Looking at these paintings or sketches as things that could well get stuck into your books later. I found that this takes the pressure off of worrying about what I'm doing. So if I happen to make a masterpiece or something I'm happy with, then that is great. This lighter way of working with less pressure really helps keep me focused on reacting to my inspiration and to stay loose and open. I think there's also something in the format of working loose leaf. To me, it feels almost slightly elevated because it's not bound. It's that potential to be a finished work ready for framing, somehow helps state that the ideas that I'm noting down are in their own right enough. This is in no way to say that sketchbooks aren't artworks in themselves, they absolutely are. I only mean this within the context of my own practice, where for me, sketchbooks are like a stepping stone towards other paintings, or a space to gather ideas in. The other thing this way of painting is great for is making lots of bases to build into later back in the studio. I sometimes think of these pages like an in-depth underpainting, like the foundations for work to come. I like to take these pages and work into them in a slower and more considered way when I'm back in the studio. And having these works that are reactions to landscape somehow embeds part of that practice and memory within the work itself for me. It helps to take me back in my mind to the sensations and the moments of that environment, to tune into the place even when I'm not there. Thank you to everyone who has left me a suggestion on my latest YouTube community post. There was a lot of enthusiasm around themes of developing ideas 
and also taking that next step out of sketchbooks. So I hope that some of what I mentioned might spark an idea to interpret within your own work. I used to get worried that I was wasting time and materials with these kinds of drawings and paintings, which didn't necessarily resolve themselves on location. But I stuck at them without really knowing why for absolutely ages. I think what I learned from this is that if there's something that I do in my practice, but I don't know the why yet, to just keep going at it. It can take years for parts to fall into place. So maybe if your gut feels like a process is important, I'd say trust your intuition. I think part of painting, which is essential and can be incredibly exciting, but also very difficult, is learning about your own creative cycle and your own creative flow, I suppose. It's being able to tune into where you are and what you need from that moment and that stage in the process wherever you are. It's learning your own creative cycle and how that changes year on year, I suppose. It's easy to fall into the trap that creativity is linear and that we can just do research, development sketches, into final works, but it isn't always like that. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's very linear and straightforward and you run the right way through and land at a final collection of paintings, but sometimes it isn't. Like today, for example, here I really wanted to start off with loose leaf pages on paper when I got to the place because I was just so excited to get painting. And then once I'd done that, I was ready to fall back into my sketchbooks and gather some more ideas and textures into them. I think being flexible and allowing space for going backwards and forwards between stages in the creative cycle is just, well, for me, it's so important. It lets me have space to breathe when I need it. It lets me work really quickly and energetically and intensely when I'm ready for that. And it lets me refresh my ideas bank whenever I need that too. Over on my Patreon page, The Outdoor Sketchbook Collective, I share video tutorials going into more depth, sharing elements of my own creative process. At the moment, I'm sharing a series that encapsulates the key stages of my own process to guide you through creating a series of work from start to finish. Of course, everyone's creative cycle and process is different, but I'm sharing the most important parts of mine to offer a framework or a guide for new painters and to offer some new ideas or inspiration to those of you who have been creating for a while. As well as these video tutorials, I create written PDF guides over on my Patreon page. And we also hold one monthly meetup via Zoom, where we can gather from all corners of the world to get together, share ideas, have a chat. And during this call, I also hold one real-time workshop to share an element of my practice. These calls are always recorded so that people can watch back and take part in their own time. Now is the perfect time to say a huge thank you to my wonderful Patreon members. Your support and your enthusiasm really goes such a long way to help make these videos here on YouTube possible. It genuinely warms my heart to see so many people getting enthusiastic about painting, about finding self-expression, about playing more as an adult and connecting with nature and the outdoors. It's absolutely beautiful to see and it's such a rewarding process to build out this community with you all. And I'm really excited to see how we all grow together.
So I am frozen through and I'm going to drive up the road to a different part of the loch and I'm going to go and treat myself to a hot chocolate because I think I've deserved it and have a think about what I've observed and what I've noticed. I really like taking time to just sit with myself when I'm not making anything and this is, tends to be my writing time where I note down anything I'm thinking, any particular elements of the landscape which have been brought to my attention and then I go from there, take all those words back to the studio and yeah, I have a kind of real-time diary entry of what the experience has been like for me. If anyone else uses writing as a tool within their visual arts practice, I'd love to hear how you approach written words in the comments down below. It's only in the last two years I've really understood the importance of written words in my practice as a tool for ideation and research and for analysing my work. It's there along every single step and has really made the whole thought process and understanding my thinking so much easier for me. So I'd love to hear how you approach it too. I always find it really difficult to see what I've actually made straight away. So I like to take some time to be able to stick them on a wall somewhere and to be able to step back and look at them from a distance. So let's head back to the studio now and do just that. So it's a few days later and I'm back in the studio and I've got everything pinned up on the wall. So I've just been taking a look and trying to take some stock, see what I like, what I don't, what I might want to work into. A uh, key thing about this stage here is that I'm still really trying to maintain what I'd said earlier in this video about mindset and really try and keep in my head that these don't have to be finished works, finished paintings. They are purely explorative, I'm thinking about it, about exploring materials, mediums, composition, just seeing how everything works together. To be honest, that's something that I try and keep into all, <laughs> everything that I make, the canvases as well, like the finished pieces, because you want that sense of freedom and lightness and no pressure. So yeah, always, it's good for always. Something that I love to do when I'm developing paintings like this is to spin them round and turn them upside down so that I can see them from a different perspective. It's especially fitting seeing as I've been painting a reflective landscape scene with the loch and essentially it's just a mirror image reflected in on itself. So it's been really fun to play with which way is actually up. This upside down nature to painting makes you find the balance in the work again. You've got to kind of problem solve your way out of it by using colour or some element of your practice to give it some weight and direction. For me, I tend to use colour to find the balance again. And that's what I've been trying to do with these paintings here today.
When I can, I find it really beneficial to be able to move around and hop in different positions from the wall to the floor to the table. And this change of location whilst I'm working in the same painting session helps me get a fresh set of eyes almost. It lets me see things anew and notice things. And I think this is probably from the change in angle, which physically gives you a new perspective of the piece. I know it's not always possible to get up and change the location or the angle when you're working. So an alternative can be to simply rotate the page or move it slightly further or closer away from you. So I have these very handy viewfinders which I often use for my in-person workshops that I run and I love to use these as a development tool when I'm looking at paintings especially like as I'm working in progress. I love using these tiny little ones to put over areas of my paintings to help frame different sections and then I'll use my phone to take a photograph of that area. I think I've talked about this quite a lot before but I love using this idea of scale, taking a section from something and trying to recreate that on a much larger scale. I'm going to take these paintings once they're all dry and leave them under a pile of something heavy, probably some books, for a few days to help flatten them out. That normally sorts them right out. And then my plans for them are probably just to take a step back for a week or two from these works so I can see them with fresh eyes properly in the future. I've got quite a few ideas up my sleeves for things I want to bring into this collection of paintings that I'm doing. I definitely want to do more analytical sketching from marine life. Um, I've got some photos to work from, from some trips and some other people's trips too that have kindly let me draw from them. So I'm going to work into that and pull everything together and see what happens later down the line. But this is definitely going to be one layer or one reference within a broader collection of ideas that will go together into some kind of melting pot for the final works. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and spending your time uh, with these videos, I hope that they've given you a nugget of an idea to follow in your own work or they've just been relaxing to switch off at the end for your day too. So yep, as always, thank you and I will see you outside.